Every few months, someone discovers the International Space Station for the first time and decides, nope, not real, fake. It's filmed in a swimming pool. It is honestly incredible. 25 years of continuous human presence in space. And these people think NASA's been running a live action scuba drama all this time. So today, let's look at the five dumbest things that space deniers say about the ISS. And more importantly, why every single one of them is utter nonsense. Hello all and welcome along to another video from me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick point on my name. I see a lot of people commenting in the comment section calling me Simon, as in S-I-M-O-N. That is not my name. My name is Dan. The channel is called Sci Man Dan, as in Science Man Daniel. That is the name. Please stop calling me Simon. Right. Let's get on with this. Which, as I said at the start, is the five dumbest things that space deniers say about the International Space Station. And if you still think it's fake after this video, then I think there's no hope for you. So let's get on with this one then, and the claim number one, which is, they film it in a pool. Apparently, every single EVA or spacewalk you've ever seen, every tool change, every cable repair, every jaw-dropping shot of an astronaut floating above Earth was actually filmed by some guy in scuba gear in Houston. Now, let's be fair here. There is a pool involved at some point. It's called the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, and yes, it is enormous. Astronauts train there before heading to the space station, because floating in water gives a rough simulation of weightlessness. Now, this is not a secret. It's on NASA's website. It's open to press tours, and you can watch training simulations on YouTube. But the training simulations are not reality. You can spot the difference instantly. For a start, the visuals are totally different. In the neutral buoyancy lab, you can see all the divers that are with the astronauts. Everything looks bluish through the light scattering through the water. And small bubbles rise upwards. But when they're in space, the background is pitch black. Reflections behave differently. Sunlight is harsh and unfiltered. And most importantly, the Earth is right there, 400 kilometers below them. Then there's the favorite bubbles in space claim. More on that in a bit. Also, if they were filming in water, why isn't the motion slowed down by drag? In real EVA footage, you'll notice tools spinning for minutes on end. Pure Newtonian motion. Try that in a pool and it would stop within seconds. Honestly, if the only evidence you've got that spacewalks are fake and filmed in a pool is I saw a dot and decided it was a bubble, then you actually have nothing. Right then, let's move on to claim number two, which is they're on wires. According to the space deniers, the astronauts on the ISS are all using wires, floating around like they're auditioning for a remake of Peter Pan. Let's be clear here, microgravity is not no gravity. It's constant freefall. The ISS is traveling so fast around Earth that it's pretty much falling around the planet. And the astronauts inside are falling at the same rate. That's why everything floats, not because they're on wires. And what about all those wire glitch videos? Well, they're normally compression artifacts or frame cuts, or even camera orientation changes that makes limbs appear to jerk. But more importantly, if you're gonna fake weightlessness, why not just film an apparent parabolic flight, where real zero-g lasts for around 20 to 30 seconds. NASA do these all the time for training purposes. Yet, the ISS live streams run for 24-7 with no cuts, and the ISS tours inside run for up to an hour with no cuts. That's a lot of parabolas. Right, moving on to claim number three then, which is tied to the first one, and that is this. There are bubbles in space. Bubbles in space, indeed. The thing is, they're not bubbles. They're ice crystals, paint flakes, and bits of debris. And they're always drifting past the camera at different velocities. During a spacewalk, the station often vents coolant, or oxygen, or even waste water. Now those tiny particles freeze instantly when they hit the vacuum of space. And they move with the spacecraft alongside it until their orbit diverges. But to a conspiracy theorist with a YouTube channel and too much time, they're bubbles. Which convinces them that it's filmed in that pool which I talked about in claim one. Let's just think this through though. If the astronauts really were underwater, their visors would have air bubbles sticking to them. Their audio would sound all weird and their movement would be slowed by drag. 
Instead, the physics are exactly what you'd predict in a vacuum. Slow rotations, infinite spin, zero drag. There's a reason that every serious physicist or videographer or cinematographer laughs at this claim. Underwater filming simply doesn't look like this. Also, you know I mentioned NASA's neutral buoyancy lab earlier. If they were hiding underwater fakery, maybe don't give it its own visitor center, hey? I hope you're enjoying this list as much as I am as we move on to claim number four, the astronaut hair conspiracy. Yes, apparently the real secret of space travel is extra hold moose. This is a genuine claim that astronauts, especially female astronauts, don't have floating hair through microgravity, but rather they've gelled it into position as if they're in zero G. And I get it, if you've not seen these sorts of images before, floating hair does look odd. It doesn't fall, it doesn't swing about, it just hovers there like it's trying to escape your scalp. But the thing is, that is physics in microgravity. There's no downward force there to pull the hair flat. And the air inside the ISS is constantly circulating. So all those hair currents make the hair drift and spread out in every direction. Now, as I said, the deniers claim that it's glued or sprayed, which is very impressive because on a six month mission, how much hairspray or mousse would you actually need? Watch what actually happens when astronauts move around. Their hair floats and follows motion, responding naturally as they rotate. If it was stiffened with product, it would stay frozen like a helmet. Instead, it reacts exactly as you'd expect in weightlessness. Also, you ever notice these people only mention it when it's a woman with long hair? When a male astronaut's shirt floats up, that's normally fine. Oh wait, no it's not. That's apparently the hinge points of the wires. And just to drive this point home, by the way, hair behaves exactly the same way in zero G flights here on Earth as it does on the space station. Look at the footage from parabolic flights. You get the same drift in hair. No conspiracy here, just physics of weightlessness. So unless NASA's hair department is secretly traveling the world, applying invisible anti-gravity hairspray to all the private zero G flights, I'm gonna go ahead and say this one is real. Right then, on to our final claim for this video, which is the camera glitches. Apparently, every time a camera lags or cuts, it's a wire malfunction or a green screen failure. Now, these glitches are usually nothing more than video encoding errors or compression artifacts, or simply switching between multiple camera feeds on live streams. But to a space denier, that's proof that they're faking the whole thing with green screens. Let's be clear here. The ISS live stream is beamed 400 kilometers from orbit, bounced through multiple satellites, routed through NASA, and then processed for public streaming. And then it's compressed again by YouTube. That's five layers of digital encoding. If it stutters for a split second, who can blame it? That's what happens when you try and broadcast from space. Think about it. If NASA really have spent decades faking space with CGI, do you honestly think they forget to fix a single frame of pixelation? They can fake orbital mechanics and live communication, but can't handle YouTube's bitrate? Come on. The reality is much simpler. Digital video is messy, unpredictable, and occasionally glitchy, especially when it's coming from a tin can circling the planet at 28,000 kilometers an hour. The ISS is one of humanity's most amazing achievements, a football field-sized laboratory orbiting the Earth, where over 280 astronauts from over 20 countries have lived and worked together. Here's the reality. You can track it. You can photograph it. Talk to the crew via amateur radio, and even watch the live views of Earth from orbit 24-7. And on that note, I'm going to leave you with this thought. If NASA really could fake microgravity, this perfectly, for decades, maybe they do deserve that funding. And that is that. That was five of the dumbest things that Space Deniers say about the ISS. I'm going to wrap this one up today. Please do let me know in the comments below what you thought as I say well done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. It's very much appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. My name is Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day. I'll see you tomorrow where the wheels are falling off the flat earth debate team as Nathan Oakley moans about his upcoming book. See you then.